Hello, my name is Angel. I'm with Truckmasters. I'm here to show you how to do your air brake and then cab inspection. First things first, when you hop in, introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Angel. I'm here to do my air brake and then cab inspection. Then you would put on your seatbelt. You talk about it. You put on your seatbelt. My seatbelt is not ripped, torn, or cut. Latches on latches, securely mounted to the floor. Uh, for this test, I'll be referring to my primary air gauge. As you can see, my primary air gauge is currently at 100 PSI, so I'm going to fan it to get it below 90 PSI. Now that we are below 90 PSI, I will go ahead and conduct a safe start. I'm going to make sure that we're in neutral, make sure my brakes are applied, and I will turn the truck into the on position. ABS light is on, came on and off. Def light is coming on and off. We have enough def and diesel. Uh, to perform this air brake inspection. Now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna uh, start the truck. First test I'll be performing today is my governor cutout test. For this test, my governor must cut out anywhere between 120 and 140 PSI. I will rev the engine no more than 1300 RPMs to speed up the process. As your air pressure goes up, you guys are gonna hear the governor cut out. It's gonna sound like a kss. Once you hear that, keep on revving the engine for an additional two seconds and make sure your primary air gauge is no longer rising. So there was the cutout, let go of the foot. Okay, my governor has cut out at 127 PSI. This is a good test because it cut out in between 120 and 140 PSI. You must continue to rev after the governor cuts out for an additional two seconds to make sure it stabilizes. Um, th for the reason for that is if it continues to rise or as, as you said it cuts out, they will fail you. So make sure that the uh, primary air gauge is no longer rising. Next test I'm gonna be performing is my applied air leak test. For this test, I cannot lose more than four PSI in 60 seconds. In order to conduct this test, I'm gonna put us in first gear. I'm gonna turn off the truck, release my foot from the clutch, come back into the on position. I'm gonna wait for my gauges to stabilize. Once they do, I'll release my brakes. When you guys do this at the DMV, mind you, this is the truck you guys will be taking to the DMV. When you do this at the DMV, you must wait for all the air to completely escape. You do not want to hear the slightest hissing sound. It's going to be awkward, especially at the DMV, but just wait. If you step on the brakes too early, you will fail. Your primary air gauge is going to go down a good amount. Once the hissing completely stops, then you engage the service brake and your needle is going to drop one more time. Once it does, you give them that reading. Okay, my uh, primary air gauge is at 80 PSI. I will now start my, six, my 60 seconds. We do have a timer in the DMV truck, the way you use it, there's a switch here, flip it on and then start it, right? I'm not gonna perform the 60 seconds. You guys get the, you guys get it. So we'll pretend the 60 passed, okay? My 60 seconds have finished, we're still at 80 PSI. I have not lost uh, more than four PSI in 60 seconds. In fact, I lost zero PSI in those 60 seconds, which makes this a good test. My foot will now be coming off the brake. My next test is my low air warning light and buzzer test. For this test, my low air warning light and buzzer must come on no lower than 55 PSI. I will now begin fanning the brakes. My low air warning light and buzzer have come on at 58 PSI. So really quickly, you have 50 right there. This other line is 60. I'm just below 60. I know on the camera, it looks like I'm right on it. I'm just below 60, which is 58 PSI. Over here, you have one, 25 which is the skinnier line and the thicker line down here is 135 so i'm at uh 58 psi 
this is a good test because uh, my low air warning light and buzzer came on no lower than 55 PSI. My next test is my pop-out test. Purpose of this test is for my air brakes to pop out anywhere between 20 and 45 PSI. So I will now begin finding the brakes. Okay, both my air brakes have popped out at 27 PSI. This is a good test because they popped out in between the required 20 and 45 PSI. My next test I'll be performing is my tug test, but in order to do so, I must first build up my air pressure to over 100 PSI. In order to build up my air pressure to over 100 PSI, I must conduct another safe start. I wanna make sure we're in neutral, make sure my brakes are applied, and proceed with my safe start and start the truck. <clears throat> While we wait for my air pressure to build to over 100 PSI, I will be, con I will be conducting my, uh, my in-cab inspection. For my in-cab inspection, I have my hood mirrors. My hood mirrors are not cracked, but not broken, securely mounted with no illegal stickers obstructing in my view, properly adjustable to the driver. I have my windshield. My windshield is not cracked, but not broken, securely mounted, with no illegal stickers obstructing my view. There is no crack bigger than a quarter of an inch. If there was, I would get it replaced immediately. I have my windshield wipers, which are not uh, not cracked but not broken and not missing. My windshield wiper blades, which have no abrasion, which are not cut, worn, or torn. And then I have my windshield washer fluid, which spreads evenly throughout my windshield. I have my rubber seal with no abrasion bubbles, no cuts. It prevents any leaks from coming into the cab. For my lights, I have my left right and four-way these are in good working condition these are in good working condition i know so because they're blinking on and off on my dash i have my def light i'm sorry i have my uh, low beams i know my low beams are in good working condition because if you notice the df light dims when you turn it on i don't know if you guys can see that but it does in fact dim and i have my high beams i know my high beams are in good working condition because the blue dash light uh, comes on when I turn on my high beams. I also have my my heater in good working condition, going hotter evenly throughout my cab. When you guys demonstrate the heater, you must let it get warm. Don't just simulate it. Wait, put your hand there and let it get hot. Then I have my defroster in good working condition, going hotter evenly throughout my my dash. Same thing. When you guys talk about that, keep your hand there and wait for it to get completely hot. I have my city horn. You need to hit your city horn. And I have my air horn. You need to hit your air horn when talking about these. If you don't, they're not going to give you the point. Um, from there, you talk about your safety equipment, which consists of your ABC fire extinguisher, which is properly, uh, properly charged, up to date with the safety pin intact, and it's securely mounted so it doesn't roll around as we drive. In the glove box, I have fuses of all, size, of all sizes. And on the passenger side, I have three reflective triangles, which are not cracked, but not broken, securely mounted, not missing, and they're also red in color. I also have my mirror, which is not cracked, but not broken, securely mounted, with no illegal stickers, properly adjustable to the driver, and no more than 10 inches away from the cab. And I believe that is it for your in-cab. Next, I will now be performing my tug test to do this. We're gonna go into first gear. I will be testing my tractor brakes. I'm gonna release my trailer brake. The same thing, you need to wait for all the air to completely get out of the system. If you're stuck waiting there for 30, 40 seconds to wait for all the air up, for all the air to escape, then you're stuck waiting there for all the air to escape. It's gonna be awkward, it's gonna be quiet, it's gonna be nervous, just put up with it. Once all the air has escaped, I will now slowly remove my foot from the clutch and give it a tug. Okay, this was a good test. This was a good test. My tractor brake held us in place and we did not pull forward. Next, I'll be testing my trailer brake, so I'm gonna release my tractor brake. 
let all the air completely escape. Once it does, slowly come off the clutch. Wait for that tug, about right there. This was a good test. My trailer brake held us in place and we did not pull forward. Next, I'll be testing my service brake test. For this test, I'm gonna release both my brakes and pull forward roughly three to five feet. I'm gonna release my brakes. I'm gonna wait for all the air to dispense. Again, unique. You guys, I know it's redundant. I probably sound like a like a repeating uh, machine or whatever. You have to wait that all the air completely out of the system. Once all the air is completely out of the system, come off the clutch, nice and slow. Go three to five feet and then come to a complete stop. Set your brakes, go into neutral. Turn off the truck. This concludes my air brake and end cab inspection. Uh, examiner, would you mind stepping out so that we can conduct our external light check? Um, Um, at some, if you guys do make a mistake, you're allowed to restart your air brake so long as you catch it. So just because you make a mistake, don't do not continue. If you make a mistake, you would say, examiner, I made a mistake. May I please restart my air brakes from the very beginning, but you need to take off your seatbelt and start from the very beginning. Introduce yourself all over again. And that is how you do your air brake and in-cab inspection here at Truck Masters. Thank you.